This tiny lathe worked out pretty good for me. The major drawback with the whole thing was the set of tools it came with. These tools are made out of such thin metal that they seem to vibrate a lot and I think that's hurting their effectiveness. So for this second project with this little lathe I'm going to try a different set of tools. So here's my deluxe set of tools. I made them out of three old screwdrivers and two old files. I made like a rounded tip tool here. This is more of a, a chisel tip. This is my parting tool and grooving tool. This is a, a larger rounded tip. I just did that on my sander. And this is a larger chisel type tip. I want to see if these tools are an improvement on this next project. My inspiration for this next project is this all that John Fix sent me. It's got a short pokey thing, brass ferrule, and an interesting shaped handle. Let's see if I can make something like that. For the pokey part, I picked up some upholstery needles from Walmart. I cut the end off of one with my Dremel. I chamfered over the cut end. I'm going to use a piece of one and a quarter diameter poplar dowel for the handle and a nine millimeter brass shell case for the furl. So I center drilled one end for the tailstock live center. In this end, I drilled a number 42 drill, which is .093. The needle is .095, so I'm hoping that gives me a good press fit. I got the needle clamped in the vise with leather to keep it from getting scratched. I'm hoping I can just push this handle on. Here goes. All right, all right. There it is in my tiny lathe. It seems pretty sturdy. Let me put it on low. It seems okay. I'm going to use my dial caliper to take a depth on the case. So that's the depth of the inside of the case. The number doesn't really matter. I'm just going to lock this. And then this here in here is the same as the depth on the back. So I'll use that to mark my, my piece of wood. I'm going to use my dial caliper again as a comparison. So that's the idea of that case. I'm going to lock it 
again I don't care what really what the number is I just know now between those jaws is what I'm shooting for and um, I'm actually pretty close I'm just gonna take a little bit more off I decided to sneak up on it with sandpaper there at the end but there we are we're there good So this pokey thing was my inspiration, and this is what I ended up coming up with. I still have to sand back here where I sawed it loose. I sanded the brass shell casing to sort of give it a little bit of a point. I'm pretty happy with that. Using the same materials, the upholstery needle, the poplar, and the brass shell casing, I want to make something along the lines of this pokey thing. All right, I cut down the needle, I installed it into the handle, and I got the whole thing chucked up in the lathe. Let's give it a test spin. It looks like it's spinning okay. I decided to cut this shell case down in length a little bit. So that's what we're shooting for there.
Here's the factory made one that I used for inspiration. Here's the one I made. Now again, I got to sand where I cut it off. This time I left the groove in the shell case. I think it looks good like that. I think that came out good too. For the third pokey thing, I just came up with something out of my imagination and sketched it out to scale. I'm still going to use a 9mm case for the ferrule and I cut my upholstery needle down to size. So I deviated from my sketch a little bit. I added this little flare out right here. I think that looks kind of good. Fits nice in the hand. I like it. This leather workers all was my inspiration for my first pokey thing on my mini lathe. And here's how my project came out. I think it looks pretty good. Has sort of the same shape. I clear epoxied the ferrule in place and then I use some JB Quick epoxy to fill in the primer pocket hole there. Give it a nice neat look. And of course Chuck helped me polish the brass. My next project was inspired by this little awl. Here's my version. It's like a like a light bulb pokey thing. Again, I filled that primer pocket with the JB Quick. It's got a nice dark gray color. I think that looks good. Chuck got to do some more polishing on this brass ferrule too. I wish it stained a little bit more evenly, but I understand that's one of the shortcomings of poplar. I still like it. This third project I just dreamt up out of my head. I started with a sketch, but then I sort of deviated from it. I went ahead and used my Bombay mahogany on the wood. I think that always looks good. Chuck couldn't believe he got to help me polish a third ferrule. Here's that JB Quick in there again. I think I might have got some of the letters too. It sort of highlighted the letters there too. Looks pretty good. I really like how that one turned out. I'm having a blast fooling around with this tiny lathe. I'm looking forward to my next project. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. My improvised tool set was a big improvement over the tools that came with the mini lathe. I plan to modify some wood chisels for my next turning project. So right now, in order to adjust this tool rest, I have to reach in between the tool rest and whatever I'm working on and get to that screw. That and the slot not being as deep as it could be are preventing me from getting the tool rest as close to the work as I'd like to. I'd like to improve upon that for my next project. I looked into getting a longer piece of extruded aluminum for the base so that I could turn uh, slightly longer uh, handles. This extruded shape is 60 millimeter by 15 millimeter, and I, I just couldn't find um, 
this shape in that size uh, readily available.